James Calm, the guy on the bike. And today we're back in the good old heart of Williamsburg. We're gonna run into front room gallery. We're gonna take a look at an exhibition by this gentleman right here, Peter Fox, and the title of the exhibition is Blind Trust. Well, we're getting Peter primed up here. I'm just gonna uh, walk around. Daniel Acock, the proprietor of here, and we'll kind of sweep over some of the work here in the front part of the gallery. All right, time to do your work, Peter. Anyway, congratulations. Thank uh, you. I think I actually did a report on a show that you had at the Hogar Collection about six or seven years ago. So if people want to go back, they can always look at that. Let's talk a little bit about the new paintings. Okay. First of all, um, just for my quick run through here, it looks like the work has gotten a little more expressionistic. I know that a lot of the work that I've seen before you had kind of uh, maybe even images or more of a uh, kind of a system that you were working with. Some of them had text in them, but this seems more like uh, kind of straight ahead abstract expressionism. Is that right or wrong or tell me what your ideas are. Okay, so these, these, this is still process-based system. Right, yeah. process-based system. And these are all, this is all acrylic? These are all acrylic. And so it's actually kind of drawn from the earlier work in that the, uh, it's drawn from the earlier process. It may be a spin-off out of it, which was a drip project. So it was all right, keep, keep up with me. We're gonna sort of drift around and look at some of these pieces as we're ch chatting. Okay, which was really a point-based system. You know, point-based color, you know, modul modulatable. You know, if, we, if we look at a drip right here, you can see this is sort of the, Variegated what the other drips look like, right? Yes. So there's stripes of color within the drip. That's right. And so I was working with that as a point, almost a pointillist or a pixelated color system. This is transferring it into a line system, which allows for... Oh, so it's going more linear. Let's go and look at uh, this suite of work. And uh, am I wrong, or did you switch over to pan? These are all on panels, right? These, these are weren't all most on of panels. the other work. Your other work was on canvas, as I remember. Was that my stuff was on canvas? Before. Okay. There's, there's a mixture of stuff on canvas. And these are all about uh, 24 inches square. They are exactly 24 inches square. There's 12 of them. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> hey, Dad's got to talk about his paintings. You you want to say something about the paintings? Can you, can you tell can you tell him what you like about the paintings or not? So, at any rate, but um, exploring the to line, you know, there's a push into line still allows the color relational color system. Um, and you're also leaving more of the ground so that the the linear part of it is is more obvious. Yeah, so there's kind of a, there's a polarization there of sort of like the, you know, paint and support, right? That the support is clearly the support, the paint is clearly the paint, and then there's the space of the illusion is where they meet. And so there's a... So are you painting these with a palette knife? Is that what you're... No, I'm spilling them they're off sp of a kind of ah. track, uh, I don't know what you would call it, a kind of a little gutter. Hockey stick? Oh, you've got... Yeah, really, a, you've got a kind of a uh, little channel that you pour them exactly, with. Exactly. So I'm setting up stripes on the channel. Same with it. I, I drip, only I'm not letting it drip now. I'm letting the kind of a ribbon of paint hangs with the stripes in it. And then I'm basically drawing with that. Okay, let's run over here. We'll take a quick look at this one. So they have a... There. Now, is this... Is this straight acrylic? Are you mixing some kind of medium in there with There's that? A lot of gel medium. So the same, gel basically medium. the same same paint setup and even the same palette, although the palette's pushed a little bit more intense and more saturated that I was using for the drip stuff. The paint is cut thinner. Okay, let's go into the the back gallery. We got some of the let me sweep over this. So some larger pieces. So what is this piece here? This has got to be about four by seven feet. Is that four what that eight. is? Four by eight. Four by eight. 
by eight and that's six by twelve. That's a big painting. So in fact they are, I, I keep telling people they're undirected within the within the construct of the project. The kind of automatic painting that I'm doing. Now do you also kind of set a uh, time frame on these? Is this done kind of one shot? Some at a time, or do you do you spend a little time and let them dry and then think about it, or yeah. it's, how does that process go? Of several weeks where it's you know a few a few hits of paint and then you know it takes with the acrylic it takes overnight till you can actually see the colors because they go on the acrylic is milky and so everything is pastel. So right as the as the uh, medium the is it matte medium that you're using? Yeah. As the matte medium dries out, it starts to clarify. I've got some other questions for you that are more uh, philosophically based. Um, well, you've been a long time painter here in Williamsburg and uh, been pursuing your practice for several years. What do you think the current state of abstract painting is these days? Current state of abstract painting. Um, That's always kind of a sandbag question, but it's a, it's you'd a big, be the person a, to ask, I think. It's a big question. Yeah. It's, it's a, I think that there's um, people, I mean, it's a fair question to ask me because people always talk to me as an abstract painter, and I still think that I'm not a pure abstract painter in, that, in the way that I see people doing abstract painting that's really an extension of what we know as abstract painting. So would you consider yourself more, you said you were into process, but is there a conceptual aspect to that as well? Well, we absolutely. All of this, all of these are sort of adopted language things. So I, I really still see this as language sculpture, where I'm borrowing... Language sculpture? Borrowing elements of language. One of the languages is abstract painting. Uh, and working and working with that sort of as a as a distancing device. As a, I'm not painting in a natural language. I'm not. It's like I may be speaking French doesn't make me French. It's, I'm just you know, using the language as a way of having some separation. The process is another distancing device, or you can use a process system. Do you have any particular artists that you look at that uh, influence you that? You feel maybe you're carrying on a certain legacy of? I mean, maybe even someone like Gerhard Richter or somebody that comes yeah, to it with a more of a sure. kind of a conceptual okay. approach? Sure. Absolutely. Well, Richter is, Richter is you know, one, of the, one of the stars in my, in my, in my pantheon, right? That he's, uh, a lot of this, you know, working on this show, I was very conscious of the squeegee work. And sort of Richter's like squeegees. <laughs> okay. You know, where is the, you know, in a lot of... I've seen big shows of that stuff where there's you know, a ton of them along. Some of them are like, wow, is this, how does he know this is done when it's done kind of thing, which is what people ask me all the time. <laughs> but, um, but then sort of like aware of that conversation of like, where is the doneness and what is doneness and what is the, what is the right way to see it, except that I know that until it feels like that, I can't stand it. The automatic painting thing, is, or the automatic drawing thing, is another borrowed language. And so there's a layering of borrowed languages. Okay. And so I don't, so there's a, yes, there's a space of abstract expressionism, but I'm not Jackson Pollock. You're not a, I'm not so basically person. you're just kind of looking at them as, as various tropes that you're using to create your own statement. I know that you also have done works that are strictly text-based, uh, do, do you think these kind of relate to that somehow? I see in this a, there's a kind of calligraphic quality to it and, and suggestions of writing in it, which I yes. find intriguing. Um, I mean, do you look at graffiti that you see on the street because some of the sweeps and the uh, I look at graffiti kind of the way that the uh, lines thin and thicken kind of remind me of some of the stuff you might see with people with spray cans, little teenagers running around. I'm attracted to that, I have to say. I've always been. How about the performative aspect of this? You know, something like this, you're obviously, you don't paint them flat on the floor, right? You paint them on an easel or on a wall like this? or yeah, do basically on the wall, but tip, the, the bottom is tipped down so it don't catch So it doesn't drip down quite as much. Right. But 
yeah, there's a, there's a whole performative sense of it too. Agreed. There's a couple. I feel like the the engagement of the automatic painting thing is a is a is its own kind of performance space. So you know, I'm going to adopt this. It's another process layer. It's another way of uh, it's another way of a way of assembling. You know, a set, a set of ideas somehow, right? But it's a way, it's a, it's the, the uh, it's a structuring system in a way for the, for the work that's coming out, you know, I was to say. That's, at, that's again, out of remove. I don't feel like, I, I don't make decisions in the painting other than to keep painting when it wants paint. And that's sort of like, I show up, I make some paint, I put the paint on the thing where it says to go, and I That's follow That's where it paint. goes. So in that sense, it is kind of like abstract expressionism. How long would you work on a piece like this? So you said this is 6 by 12? This is 6 by 12. This was done over the course of about 10 weeks, from start to finish. Where some okay. days got no paint, some days it got a bunch of paint. Um, and this is on canvas? Okay. I'd say that'd be a pretty heavy panel. All right, Peter Fox. Is it blind faith? Is it blind trust? Is that blind trust? Blind trust. Okay, here at the front room gallery. And uh, congratulations. And as always, we thank Kate. Thank you.